Economics is a popular choice among students of the external system. So what does studying economics actually entail? It's basically the study of a new language. When you learn a language, you have to learn its grammar. And uh, there's the vocabulary and there's the, gr the grammar. So the main purpose of this course is to build up the grammar of that language. And that means to teach students how to reason in economics and how economists reason, because it's not necessarily that most, well, most of them actually will not become economists, but they will still work in an economics environment. They will work in banks, they'll work in management. All these are sub-areas of economics. I think that the first and most important thing should be a motivation. And the motivation is not just the motivation to get another certificate, the motivation to really want to know, really want to understand the world. Now, there's no mechanism of, of providing any evidence of this kind of qualification, but if individuals have to make choices themselves, I would simply tell them that if that's not motivating them, they're wasting their time. This is a degree level subject where you become an expert in the subject. So what sort of students are best suited to an economics course? It helps to have some kind of very basic mathematical or logical uh, training to be able to handle material which is based on logic. It doesn't have to be formal, it can be even uh, non-formal or verbal uh, form of logic, but to have a way of systematically analysing things. Now usually the best indicator of such things would be some qualification in mathematics at the either GCSE level or A level. I would recommend that students begin by reading the subject guide. And what I mean by reading is that they go through the entire chapter, each concept which is not clear to them, they immediately go to one of the recommended textbooks, which is a different, a slightly lower level of exposition, and then come back to the, to the chapter. But at the end of the exercise, they should have read the entire chapter. Once they have done this, they have to draw by themselves each of the diagram in the chapter and understand each element of the diagram, understand what it is, how it moves, and uh, uh, how it relates to other elements in the same diagram. The two levels of knowledge really we seek them to achieve. One which I would call familiarity with the material, or in economics more specifically it's model recognition. They have to be able to recognize and be able to uh, present the fundamental basic models as they are without any further complication. This is the first level of knowledge. The second level of knowledge is, of course, the ability to command the material. Of course, if you only know material without commanding it, you're a slave to it. So in order to make sure that you command the material that you have just acquired, you have to go further. It's the ability to relate these models to real-life situation. Real life here means normal language. And the second one is the ability to solve them, to use them in order to solve situations. When it comes to exam time, what qualities are the examiners looking to test? To surprise students in the exam. So, students should expect to read an exam question and have no clue what it's about. That's a good start. So, the responsible uh, reaction to it is not, of course, getting into panic and uh, looking for your inhaler. The thing is just look at the question and say, just a minute, you know. I haven't seen this before, but I know the material and I can do it. When they come to the exam, therefore, they have to prepare themselves to be surprised. Uh, and the only difference between the good students and the best students is whether it's a pleasant surprise or a terrible surprise. The, it's a pleasant surprise not because you knew it. It's a pleasant surprise because you say, I can do it. No, I see a problem. I'll sit down. I'll solve it. And by the end of it, I'll be able to handle it. And most of the points we give students in the exam have nothing to do with the final answer. We want to see how they deal with the problem step in after step. Actually, the, the points they receive for the solution are very, very little. So most of the points is actually for the whole process of dealing with the questions. And that's why it doesn't matter that they've seen it before or have not seen it before, because it's the way they approach things that matters a great deal. With an economics qualification, how are students better equipped to cope with career and life opportunities? 
economics allowed me to be able to learn not only about the fundamentals of running a business, but more at large factors such as um, the economy and how the economy obviously interacts with smaller businesses and so on and so forth. The general objective of education is to train the mind. And the way you train the mind is by challenging it. 